as you continually go and you continually relax more and more, you will get to a state where there's no movement of mind. Body is still here, but you don't see it. It's just like somebody turning off the lights. There's, you, you're not able to see anything at all. You'll be in that state for a little while. There's no movement of attention at all. Absolutely none. You come out of that state, and the first thing you see is how mind's attention and how the process of mind occurring happens. And you see ignorance, and with ignorance as condition, you see mental formation. With mental formations as condition, you see consciousness. With cons as condition, you see mentality, materiality. With mentality, materiality as condition, you see the six sense bases. With the six sense bases as condition, you see contact. <laughs> With contact as condition, Feeling arises with feeling as condition. Craving arises with craving as condition. Clinging arises with clinging as condition. Habitual tendency arises with habitual tendency as condition. Birth arises with birth as condition. Old age and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair arise. This is this whole mass of suffering. This is how it works. And you see this. It will happen very fast and your attention is so strong that you'll be able to recognize all of these different states. And then it will occur to you to notice that when ignorance does not arise, then the, the mental formations don't arise. If the mental formations don't arise, consciousness won't arise. If consciousness doesn't arise, mentality, materiality won't arise. If mentality, materiality doesn't arise, the six sense bases don't arise. If the six sense bases don't arise, Contact won't arise. If contact doesn't arise, then feeling won't arise. If feeling won't arise, craving won't arise. When craving won't arise, clinging won't arise. When clinging won't arise, your habitual tendency won't arise. When the habitual tendency doesn't arise, birth doesn't arise. If birth doesn't arise, old age and death, pain, sorrow, lamentation, they all will not arise. Now this is a cessation of this whole mass of suffering. And when you see that, your understanding is so brilliant at that time that you experience Nibbana. That's the way you get to understand how the process works. That's how you never have any doubt again as to whether this is real or not. And you see that this is all part of an impersonal process. It carries on because of conditions. That's how it arises and that's how it ceases. So when you have the experience of Nibbana, it's not this mystical, mas magical flash. What it is, is your deep understanding and seeing very clearly how this process works. So that, that, that's a little bit different than a lot of people are teaching these days. So like the, the ending point is a state of emptiness. 
Well, when you see the cessation, the complete cessation, that is Nibbana, but it's not empty of, it's not nothing, it is something, but it's difficult to talk about because it's an unconditioned state. Everything we know is conditioned. So I, I get away from talking about what Nibbana is because you can't talk about it. Any way of talking about it is putting conditions on it, and it's unconditioned, it's beyond that. So, we will feel when we get in there. Yeah, you'll know, <laughs> then come back and tell me. <laughs> Through the variation state. And if conditions are right, we'll get in there. No. And the thing is, right after you have this experience, there is so much relief. You've been carrying around this burden of always thinking that everything is personal and seeing things in a very uh, distant way, not seeing closely. And now you understand, oh, and you will be happy for a few days, like you've never been happy before. And even after that experience, it still has effects on the way you see the world around you. Now, what I just described to you is called the path knowledge. That isn't the end of the road. Just having the path knowledge there's, there is some personality change, but not a lot. You will have to have this experience again. That is the cessation of perception and feeling. And then when you get out of that, you will see dependent origination arising and passing in away. That, when that happens, that is what you call the fruition knowledge, and that's where the personality development really takes place. If you're doing it through meditation, then that will happen in such a way that lust and greed will never enter your mind again. Lust and hatred, I mean. Now think about that. Your mind will never get angry again. Yeah, it's, it's worth working for. You never have any doubt. You see everything as part of an impersonal process. You never take things personally anymore. That means you have this balanced mind that's balanced all the time. You never have any doubt whether this is the right way to go or not. You know it's the right way to go because of your deep experience. So it's really uh, nice when you can get the fruition. Now the fruition can happen at any time. You do your meditation and you get the path knowledge and then you go home and you start washing the dishes and you feel your mind starting to go very deep or you're cleaning the, the house, or you're doing something. And you say, well, let's let that go. And then you sit for a little while, and you watch your mind go deep, and experience that cessation of perception and feeling. And then you see the dependent origination arising and passing away. And you might see it three times, or you might see it four times, depending on uh, what your experience is. And after that, you have, it, it's completely unshakable that you will never have anger arise in your mind again. You never have lust, greed for things.